Let's start talking about week one action because we've got some really good games to start off the 2013 high school football season. It all starts with what will be our Highlight Zone game of the week, Snyder at Bishop Lures. And this came down to a defensive yeah. stand by Snyder last season, and we saw where both teams ended up. They ended up down in Indianapolis. Right. Uh, do you see this uh, as another defensive battle? How do you see this one playing out? Well, you're not going to like my answer, but I don't know. And the, and the reason I don't know is both programs have so many question marks. Uh, we don't know what we're going to see out of Snyder. They lost, like I said earlier, they lost 37 seniors. They could reload because I tell you an interesting uh, philosophy Coach, uh, Coach Tipman told me about. They force the freshman coaches to play everybody on the freshman team so that they get experience playing and they love football. They don't drop out because they didn't play as freshmen. Then as a sophomores, they start to weed that down, but the kids get experience early. So you don't know how those kids who do have many years experience of JV and freshman football are going to perform on Friday night as Coach Tipman calls them Friday night players. And so you just don't know what Snyder's going to do on Friday night. Lures, you have a little bit better idea because you know offensively they're going to take advantage of the quarterbacks. They do have some athleticism and some playmakers. I mentioned Solomon Smith. But you know, something really makes me hesitant to go completely against Snyder and say, oh, Lures is going to knock off Snyder this year. I just have a feeling Snyder is such a good, big program that they can reload and they will be able to take care of Lures. Dwanger at Southside. Another good match. Yeah. We're going to see a lot of athletes on the field. Yes, we are. Uh, I like what Eddie Fields has done with that program, making those kids yeah. accountable. Talk a little bit about what you think you're going to be seeing in that game because uh, this a few years ago was one of the best games out there. I think Bishop Dwinger has more depth and more strength, and so they'll ultimately be able to run the football and make enough plays in the passing game. They have such mismatches, like I said, with water cutter and, and scent liver. The size-wise, once they get in the red zone, they can either throw up to those guys and they can go up and get it over the smaller defensive backs, even though they're really speedy, the south side defensive backs, the secondary, they don't have the size uh, of Bishop Dwinger. And if you're worried about that, then Fia Cable can run the ball and they can beat you that way. And so Dwinger just has a lot of different variety in their playmakers. They have size and strength. I think their depth eventually wears on Southside, and they end up winning the game in the second half, uh, even though I think Southside has the capability through special teams and offensively and even defensively with Donovan Clark to make play big plays, splashy plays, eye-catching plays to keep them in the game for a while. Northside against Concordia. This is going to be interesting because Northside has so many transfers. How are they going to fit yeah. in? But you know that they have talent, and Ryan Hall does a great job on the defensive side of the football. Then you take into account Concordia, and we mentioned in the preview the quarterback position, David Morris. He doesn't have Mark Rogers out there, doesn't have Brendan Williams back right. there. So he's got to do a little bit more on his own. But Max Prep says he's the best quarterback in the state right now. Well, he may be. And uh, we saw last year with the Indianapolis Colts, if you have a great quarterback around a mediocre team, and not, not to disparage Concordia, but they don't have the talent top to bottom that Northside does. But a great quarterback makes up for a lot. And so David Morrison has, much like Southside has big play capability, so does David Morrison and his receivers and his running backs out of the backfield. So uh, Coach Manigel told me he, he can run the entire playbook. Uh, he can throw everything at, at, in the kitchen sink at, at opposing defenses. And so... I wouldn't be shocked if Concordia hangs with Northside for a while, but ultimately Northside, Ryan Hall, you want to talk about it, like Lee Etzler did a great job and Eschbach does a great job and all these guys do a great job, but uh, Ryan Hall has really stepped into Northside and Colkman had it going for a, a while and did a nice job, but Ryan Hall's done a fantastic job of building a program. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think Northside just has too much uh, depth and uh, talent and they'll wear Concordia down. Homestead at Huntington North. I think this, this matchup's a little more intriguing than it has been in yeah. years past. We saw last year, the first year of the Trent Fine era, they'll throw the football at Huntington North. Yes, and it, it's fun to watch. Um, and Homestead obviously has some question marks replacing a quarterback, replacing Isaac Griffith. How do you see this one playing out? Is that Craig Baum? I think it's really, really close this year. I do, um, too. Um, I think that Homestead's come back a notch, and I think Huntington North in the second year, Trent Fine's going to – they're much more familiar with his system, and, what, and he uh, had a whole offseason to work with these kids. I think this is going to be a really close game. With about three minutes to go, it's going to be uh, – 
you know, crunch time and see who can make plays down the stretch to win this game. This is not going to be the old Homestead blows out Huntington North uh, days. This is going to be really, really close. So get there early, get a good seat, get some popcorn. It's going to be worth your uh, money. All right, and Leo at Norwell. Can Leo continue their success? And they've been very good against Norwell, very good overall. But can Norwell build off that momentum and continue to keep things rolling here in 2013? Well, this is a nice future NHC matchup. Uh, we'll see this game a lot in the, in the years to come. But uh, I, I don't think Norwell is to the level of, of Leo. Even though Leo graduated some, like I, I said, they have 22 seniors returning. So Leo is still Leo. They're a dominant team. I think that they have too many uh, weapons, too much talent, too much, they're too much size, too much everything for Norwell this year. I, I think Norwell be, will be more competitive than they have been uh, the last couple years. I mean, a few years ago, they were really, really good, but mm -hmm. uh, they've struggled of late in the last couple years. Uh, so it, it won't be a, a blowout by any proportion, but uh, Leo will win this game comfortably. All right, should be interesting. Columbia City's at Warsaw, Belmont. That's a great game. That'll be a good one. Belmont is at Woodland. We'll have to see. Uh, that'll be ground game Crazy. The first there. step to a winning season for the Warriors happens on Friday night. All right. Yeah, could be a really good one and could be a big building block for sure with Haydock uh, and the Woodland Warriors. Well, he's Tom Davis. I'm Glenn Marini. We'll be back next week to recap the week one games and look forward to week two. But for now, he's Tom. I'm Glenn. We'll see you then.